Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time, On Target Masterclass on Investing with Military Precision. Today is Wednesday, June 24th. Quick update on the podcast. Uh, things are going great. Uh, picked up a couple more subscribers or a couple more downloads last night. Still out there with uh, six people in the room as far as membership. We have eight total episodes out and then 173 now total downloads. I'll have be out with episode nine tonight on how much money you should have when you're 65, which will end that five, uh, five podcast series. And then I'll move on to some specific topics, of course, all setting us up for success for that podcast launch, which is a week from tonight on uh, July 1st there. And again, that will be Facebook Live. I have four of the 10 interviews confirmed as of uh, this morning. And then again, hope to have those people on Facebook Live with me over Zoom. Uh, like this to be able to talk about the interview we had for the website. All those episodes will drop, and I expect a lot of momentum going into the big 4th of July weekend as far as the podcast. But focusing back on today, if you're new in the room, make sure that on your chat, you have all attendees pulled up at the bottom in the blue bar there. It should say all panelists and attendees. Thanks for taking care of that. Okay, for today, we're going to talk about, as always, growing our money, protecting our money, and living off our money. The topic of today is going to be the FANG group, which used to be the FANG group, which was popularized by Jim Cramer on his TV show, Mad Money, and then kind of took off. That's FANG has been around for a long time. That has now been adjusted because Netflix was the in and it Netflix is out. And then the other was replaced by another A and an M. So that's where you get that from. But that is really growth that is not protecting your money because they're speculative. It's not living off of them because if they pay a dividend, it's only paying a little fraction. Uh, but it's truly where the growth has been in this market. And when you look at this market and how it continues to move higher, it's largely because of the names that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, for the academic topic, it's going to be momentum investment and excuse me, uh, momentum investing, which is a lot of what this is with the tech names, but there can also be other specific names out there that fall into that. For our flow today, we are going to look at the long stuff first. We're going to talk about some short. We'll straddle the open with some day trading stuff and then go back long towards the end to see about, you know, setting your portfolio up for success. Um, in the long run. So we'll talk about the market review around the world. We will go talk about our headlines of today. The long-term names that we're gonna talk about out there are Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and the momentum is the ETF. The, uh, then we're gonna talk about day trading opportunities. There are a few names that popped up. We'll execute that. We'll come back around, pass the open and go to the Q&A. For contingency, steve at otot.now if you have any questions on that. And then of course, if uh, the disclaimer there, is this is an educational presentation, so I don't know your specific situation. So always do your due diligence before you take action on things that you see here. All right, with that, let's go up to TD Ameritrade. We'll take a look at where we've been in the past year. So for the new folks in the room, from left to right, we're looking at the SPY, all the way at the big uh, run up through the end of 2019, all the way to the top of mid-June. And then we had the COVID-19 crash all the way down to the bottom, which is the March 23rd lows and then I can't say a straight line up but darn near a straight line up to make what I consider the letter B and then we've been stuck in that channel that's been uh, depicted there and again that's AI that's putting that channel up there not me so it's not an interpretation it's a no kidding a bot interpretation of us meeting a parameter we are in a channel up move uh, in the S&P we talked yesterday about 300 being the the level that needs to be held there uh, it's held easy um, we actually finished in the green, even though the candlestick's red from where we opened uh, yesterday. The NASDAQ is on an eight-day winning streak. Those the names that we're talking about are more NASDAQ-type techie names. So a big move up. And you can see on the volume chart down here, uh, volume's not been uh, super high. So that generally, when the volume's lower, that generally means that calmness in the markets. So we shall see. We do have a big contentious election coming up. And a little over four months, so I expect the volume and the volatility to pick up. Okay, let's zoom in on the past few days in our in the SPY. So what you're looking at here is the dark blue is the market open, and then the light blue is the market uh, after hours market. So uh, let's see, we had that big move down Friday, as where you can see there, and then kind of big move up Monday. Futures were up higher, and then closed, you know, 
down from where it opened yesterday. We kind of sold off kind of hard into the after hours. I do like that move up. I don't necessarily know what's causing the move up today uh, in the pre-market, but at least we're getting a little closer to even before we hit the open here. Okay, let's take a look at the calendar. Yesterday was uh, after market was AVAV, uh, was aerospace, aero environment, if you will, uh, beat earnings after market last night. So again, they're gapping up and it's a good news story. I have that name long. They're all things uh, drones, if you will. Um, as far as today, KB Homes is going to be after the market. So again, another home builder. Lennar beat earnings. Everybody expects KBH to beat, beat earnings as well based off of this. So that may be some momentum already moving into the stock in anticipation of that. Okay, we'll bring that down. We'll hit the CNBC and we'll take a look at the round of the world markets. What you'll see in Europe is that the, uh, well, there's where we are for the uh, pre-market. NASDAQ's almost back to even. Checking out Europe, you can see that across the board, it was down almost a couple of percent. Uh, so not good news there. And again, we're talking second wave of the coronavirus is pretty much the news of the day. When you look at Asia, it's almost even across the board. So not a lot of movement there. We'll click out uh, Tuesday's stuff here in the US. Already talked about it was up across the board, but it was down from where it opened. So kind of an interesting uh, dynamic there. But the VIX is back above 30. So we shall see how that holds. Bonds uh, up slightly across the board there. Nothing too much in the news for oil. We've got the um, oil back down below 40. So again, want to hold that 40 to 60 level. And then in the precious metals, the only thing move of significance is that big move down in silver. Don't really know what caused that, but a 3% you know, move down. If you are looking for a precious metal for holding that through the election as a hedge, uh, an entry on silver today wouldn't be a bad option. Okay, let's go to the back to the main screen there and we will go through the headlines. Coronavirus, sure, you're seeing some big numbers that you know surges 30% from a week ago. There's been some, again, following Trump on Twitter, uh, which is an, like its own entertainment channel. Um, again, more testing, yes, more cases. It's really the death ratio, so everybody can fight over fun with statistics. Fauci's testimony yesterday was actually pretty straightforward. Didn't tell anybody anything they didn't already know, which is we don't really know how this is going to go. Um, and in certain areas, there's the disturbing surge were his words. Okay, yep, I got that. All right, uh, news on copper, not even gonna touch that. Soaring debt levels, not uncommon there. All right, let's continue on up. Uh, Dick Sporting's good, we talked about them yesterday. They did get a nice upgrade this morning. So did Morgan Stanley. They called the, uh, whoever upgraded them said they're best of breed. I disagree, I think JP Morgan Chase is best of breed, but that's their opinion. Uh, the new F-150, if you haven't heard about that, the passenger seat's a live flat passenger seat, so you can actually sleep in your pickup truck. So maybe it's the new work from home, work from your car environment. All right. Uh, we'll click on, uh, we'll see. I don't know. I suppose that's attractive for some. Uh, yeah, there. the CARES Act does. If you want to raid your in, in retirement accounts, you can. That's probably something you need to engage on somebody with if you're going to pull that maneuver. But you can. Steal $100,000 from yourself if you want. Uh, Peloton still hitting new records, uh, obviously from the stay at home, work at home, work out from home environment, because a lot of the gyms are only still open at 25% capacity. Uh, cruise stocks, huge downgrades across the way there. Uh, Royal Caribbean will be one of the names we will be taking a look at uh, short today, but pretty much across the board, those will be short names to take a look at. All right, uh, Carnival, also another one, CCL short. Um, Dell and uh, VMware are, Dell has 81% of VMware shares. They're looking to either buying that out completely, 100% taken off the table, or completely divesting it and spinning it off. So both those names are up. So we'll take a look at those as longs, uh, Dell and uh, VMW. Um, Again, those would be short-term longs. That doesn't necessarily, I mean, it's a long-term long, if you will. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit more, see what we have down here.
All right, nothing. Okay, there's this is uh, the bottom one. There's the last one I'll talk about. A, a wave of selling estimated to be in the billions. It's about to hit the market. This is what's called a sensationalized headline. Nobody knows what's about to hit the market. Uh, what the actual news is here is there's there's the cash that was on the sidelines is now kind of in the market, and it tends for safety to go back to the sidelines. That would mean selling. That is a uh, but when you read headlines like that, you have to realize okay. That is just ridiculous. Okay, uh, we're 10 minutes in, so let's go over to our longs. We're gonna talk, of, we're gonna look at the Schwab display. Has our, fix, our six names, and you can kind of see if you start upper left to bottom right, that is your uh, FANG group. So your F-A-A-M-G. Uh, all of those are up big. And again, uh, the biggest addition there is of Amazon and Microsoft replacing Netflix, which is a more accurate statement for what has happened. Um, and then you can see that of these, only Google is the only one that is not back to its February, uh, mid-February highs. And we will talk about that. And the momentum obviously is your ETF down at the bottom right. Okay, so as far as Facebook specifically, Facebook has always had some issues because of the privacy thing. Now they're facing a uh, sponsoring hate theme. So if you've seen the headlines, uh, a few more com companies every day are now coming out and um, boycotting Facebook because of their hate promotion policies, which is actually a lack of censorship policies, which now you get into First Amendment stuff. So they're a battleground for sure. But they are also the number one advertising place for small and large companies in the United States, maybe even the world. So when you think ad dollars and where they're going, and I have ads running right now for the podcast on, on Facebook, because I can throw a hundred bucks at something, I can get 10,000 looks at it. Now, maybe people scroll on by, I got that. Everybody's desensitized to ads anyway. But uh, the fact is they have money rolling in that is high margin dollars. So they're gonna continue to uh, print money there in the, in the advertising space. Other things they're into is the big augmented reality, virtual reality push. They just killed off their basic o Oculus VR uh, headset and are only going with higher end sort of stuff. So when you think of themes like AI, uh, AR, VR, those sort of things, Facebook's gonna be uh, involved in that somewhere um, and profiting from it. So a lot of uh, cutting edge stuff. Okay, moving on over to Apple. You know that I think it's the best, so should you because that's what you're going to hear from me every day. So um, obviously, highly addictive products. It's a luxury brand as well as a tech tech brand. It is something you have to have. So when I say it's not just highly addictive from you like the functionality of it, but from a when people see you, if you are maybe a 16 year old junior in high school, nobody can see you with the Samsung phone or so I've heard. So the the other products, I'm on AirPods Pro right now. They're the only noise canceling headset slash Air, AirPods that I have used that it actually work unbelievably. Flew on an airplane with them a couple times last week. Amazing technology. Expensive. Yeah, I got that, but you're paying for cutting edge tech. Obviously, Apple's run up because they had the Worldwide Developers Conference announcements on Monday. iOS 14 is coming out. There are some highly anticipated changes there. Um, they also have the iPhone 12 coming out. Generally, it's a buy the rumor, sell the news, which is another kind of momentum type, type topic. But uh, Apple tends to run up into the iPhone release in September, and then it sells off because when people get their hands on it, everybody complains because that's what we do now in society. And every, so the stock sells off, and then you get into January, and the iPhone sales number breaks records, right? Because that's like the cycle we do every time. I would not expect this to be any different. Uh, eventually, if they whiff on something, the iHome thing, they clearance it and move it off the books and get it out of their ecosystem like that fast. So they're pretty smart about knowing when they miss the mark and, and moving on. Okay, the next one is Amazon. Obviously, I think if you are an American, you need a share of Amazon. Uh, okay, they're expensive. Yeah, they're at 2,700 and it's going higher. You know that. Uh, it just can't really be stopped. Eventually it'll be stopped by the Department of Justice on monopoly concerns. So and that's not a bad thing. That's just, hey, capitalism doesn't work if there aren't any competitors. So if Amazon steamrolls everybody in their path, uh, then that's an issue. There's a big 
a big article out yesterday and I talked to some of my experts that I know in the digital media space as far as what Amazon's doing with advertising it's kind of sneaky they have a well it's not sneaky it's everybody knows it but me I guess but uh, behind the scenes, if you will, their advertising arm is almost the size of their Amazon Web Services arm, which is their cloud-based stuff, which is pretty amazing. So ad dollars, like I talked about with Facebook, is basically high margin. It's not quite free money, but darn is it pretty close just to jam an ad onto a website and collect the money for it. So high, high margin stuff there for Amazon. So we shall see what happens with them. I uh, This is one of these stocks when... so. People say, hey, I don't have any. Should I buy some here? Gosh, it's run up so much. It's the totally don't care. Do not care at all what price you pay to enter this position. Uh, 10 years from now when it's at $10,000 or $20,000, you won't care uh, what you paid for it on June 24th, right? So uh, close your eyes. Yeah, you may buy it. If, if it went literally, if I bought 10 shares today and it dropped to $17.50 tomorrow, I would buy 10 more. I mean, all you're going to do is buy more when there's a big sell-off. So uh, it's just one of those names. Microsoft is a name that was obviously fantastic through the 80s and 90s. You're talking, this is the perfect example of the let's just buy 100 shares of something and buy and hold, which I like to do with best of breed. Uh, it's just run up huge for decades. And guess what? It's still got legs. You still have Microsoft Windows. I happen to be more of an Apple person myself, so working with Windows is kind of like jamming a pin in my eye, but I know that several businesses out there run off of uh, Windows and a lot of PCs are out there too. Obviously, they're involved in several different uh, revenue streams as well. So it's another great name to be in. You just can't lose with Microsoft. Um, Google is another name that I moved into earlier this year when there was a sell-off. Uh, getting it down below 1100 was an absolute steal. So I tried to pick up a couple shares for everybody. You may not have a lot, but you've got some and you're just going to ride this wave higher. They're the same as Apple that they have some complete misses that when they come out with stuff, they had the Google eyeglasses. Yeah. Cool picture, right? Did they work? I don't know. I never put a pair on, but boy, at the $1,700 price point, they were back out of the news fairly quickly after that thing was released but that's not their bread and butter. Their bread and butter is search. So from having run, you know, running a couple websites myself, uh, I talked to Google and they're more than willing to have me pay them $5,000 a month to have my company hit be the number one in Google search. Well, that's certainly not worth it to me at my revenue point, but it is worth it to many businesses for their ad spend. So again, collecting ad dollars, it's kind of a three, three horse race if you will, off to the left between Facebook, Amazon, and Google. And if you're going more niche then, or more targeted, then possibly you can go with a smaller media firm. But the big three are just going to kind of crush that space. That's my opinion. Okay, the bottom right is Momentum, which is M-T-U-M. That's an exchange-traded fund. So again, if you just want to take the best of the best or whatever is on fire, you can hop into the Momentum um, ETF. And that's what it does. It's highly active. It's going to catch names like Nicola that popped 100% in a day. Um, there's another name out there called Workhorse, which is a drone name. They got a lot of attention. It was up almost 50% yesterday. And I bought some. Uh, just nibbling there. It's not really something that's not ready for prime time here yet, but it's a name uh, of interest. So uh, that's the names that it will do. But as soon as things turn, it also dumps them. So like I don't know if they would would have held uh, Nicola did go up 100%, and since then it sold off about 30%, and now it's back on the way up. Who knows what today holds with that name, but it's certainly a name that they uh, that they would have been in for at least a little bit. Okay, that's it for the long term. Let's go over the tabs. We'll start looking at short term stuff. All right, stuff that I have down. Let's put up CCL would be the top name, uh, and again, this was the specific uh, negative headline. Closed at 18, they're down at 17. I like that as far as uh, the chart and the move down. Uh, it's going to be a S&P cuts credit rating to junk status. So you don't wanna hear junk in relation to your business. Um, so that's not good. Uh, click on the gapping down tab and see what else pops up out of there. All the cruise lines are probably going to be down in that name, in that area. 
All right, REGI, I'm not familiar, but I like an 8% gap. Let's put that up there, REGI, short. See what kind of volatile, yeah, it's low volume, it only has 3,500. From 28 down to 25, we'd have to wait. So I'm gonna put wait on uh, REGI, but that's something I'd be interested to see. Obviously negative uh, earnings there, dismal quarter to forecast that kind of, that kind of news. Let's see, let's, Put uh, Dell in there, D-E-L-L. -L. Again, this is the long off the news of uh, them either buying out all of VMware or spinning it off. So they closed at 49, they're up at 55. That is over, that's 10%, almost 11% move there. So kind of a large move for what we're looking at. Let's look at the other one, BMW, which is VMware. That's the other firm that's involved. Closed at 140 up, nine up at 159. So again, that's three to four percent or so. Um, so that's a little bit better of a gap. I don't know that those are either really tradable. I think the immediate move of that announcement is priced in. So I don't plan on taking those, but we will certainly circle back to them. Uh, you see in the gapping up at the lower left is AVAV. So we'll take a look at that. That is the earnings beat uh, from yesterday. And again, if you're not familiar with this company, Air Environment is the i call them leading i call them best of breed those are my titles uh for drone maker uh in the world um so a lot they make uh, i like to say they make the mouse and the mouse traps and not only make drones they make drone defense systems so pretty good way to get your arms around that whole space i do like the uh the gap up there we'll bring uh, AV, avav back up um so we can take a look at that so they closed at 71 they're up at 74 so so i kind of like that it has you know if you about a month ago, it looks like um, we're on a five minute there. They were up at 79 or so, so they might have some room to the upside. I don't think I will take them as a trade. Okay, some other names that are coming in are Plug. Uh, we're gonna try for a twofer and Plug. There's some danger in that, but uh, we shall see. So they closed at 643, they're gapping up again at 743. So quick math says that's another 10% or so. Um, okay. We'll see. I don't know that you'll have three R's to the upside on that, but, but uh, we'll take a look. Uh, that's it for what Predator has put in there. Let's go around the tabs. Let's start with this one, high volume. IAU is basic gold. It's not moving much. It's just high volume. There's your plug. I'm sorry, 12.91%. Enovio. You know, it's funny that uh, Enovio name my day trade was from five dollars to uh or excuse me uh yeah it was five dollars to eight dollars and thirty cents in one day um i haven't touched it since and look at it it's up at 23 obviously that's related to news off of the coronavirus neo gapping down four percent or so click on that see if it's a headline or not associated with it no just gapping down that could be gapping down just because a uh, reversion to the mean sort of thing um yeah, I'll write it down. Neo would be a short. Uh, T-Mobile did not work yesterday. It was up. Um, it was up on the day. It's down a little bit. They're issuing a whole bunch of new shares, so we shall see. Um, I'm not going to follow it today. Okay, next tab. There's your Dell, 12.5%. BMW is at 6%, so BMW set up a little bit. Don't know if there's the upside on that. AVAV at 4.2%. Peloton, I wouldn't touch here just because it's run up. It's a bouncing off new highs. Scott Miracle Grow, no. Amazon, uh, no. Amazon is one of those that you could probably just, if you can't find anything to trade and you just take a stock to be in the green today, you know, that's one of those you can buy. Buy up some Amazon and let it sit. Set a lower stop so you hit your R if you're out, but if not, just let it cook all day. You might get an R or R and a half out of it. All right, let's go to the decliners tab. Okay, low volume until we get down to Tesla, only down 1%, so not much on volume. So again, volume on our shorts is gonna be an issue there. Let's go to the next tab. The, we have Dell, Dell VM, Talked about already, kind of scanning through the names. Yep, 
EPR properties, not enough volume. Okay, off to the next one, next tab. There's your plug power, 13, still marching higher. We'll get that set up on a chart here in a second. There's the workhorse group, WKHS. Uh, let's click on that real quick. And then uh, we'll get the, start getting the chart set up for you on another screen uh, while I talk about workhorse here. Okay, this is a drone maker. Be careful that uh, the move up has been significant in this name. Now, while that being said, I did buy some yesterday. Uh, so, <laughs> So I don't know if it can uh, maintain here, but the headlines have been immaculate on, on this. Again, it's a um, fancy drone delivery system that's out there. So interesting to watch, um, we shall see. While we're on the topics of things interesting to watch, let's put LK over here um, and we'll take a look at how the House of Pain is going. It was down pre-market last time I looked, uh, 279 down to 272. There is a thesis out there. You know I'm long the name, uh, but if for my day trader, you can continue to sort. We're not at that point to where they're going to get de delisted, which again, their meeting is Friday. So people will, could sell off into this. If you're looking to plus up, get around 250, 260, and you can add uh, that. Again, I'm talking long-term there. Not really gonna try it short-term. Okay, that's it for the names that we'll take a look at, see if anything uh, pops in here. Okay, we got VMW long, uh, that's VMware, I got that. So let's switch to the TD Ameritrade uh, ThinkPipes view. We're gonna have a new view tomorrow. We didn't get there today, but uh, tomorrow we're gonna have the spot, we're gonna have four frames tomorrow. We'll have the left as the spy, so you can actually see real time how the market and the volume and the movement and the you know speed out of the market is affecting your trade. So that's gonna be a better display going into tomorrow. All right, so we've got plug, we've got LK in the middle because that brings the pain and then spy off to the right. So let's put BMW in the middle. All right, and then for my trade, and then we'll go back and talk about your trades. Pull up CCL on the right. I want to see where it is right now. I do like that run up uh, back out to a 15 minute chart. I just want to look at some history on this. Either one. All right. It's been up at 22, 16, 6. I think it could break new lows today. All right. You can zoom back into a one minute today chart. I'm going to take CCL short. Uh, I do want it to set up, so I will take it in at, because I think there'll be some short covering, I'll take in at three minutes and out at 10 with a, all right, 20 cents would be pretty safe, 15 looks like it might work too. If that backs it all, if it backs it up at all real time in CCL, um, then I would take it, uh, probably at a 10 cent stop, but um, I do want to protect, if you come over here, I do want to protect against that 1726 level. It's the kind of the pre-market high. So that'd be 20 cents. So I'm gonna go with the 20 cent stop. Um, I might not hit three R, so to the downside, it would have to break uh, pretty much new lows to be able to get to the three R. So 20 cent stop, if I were to take that trade real time, I would try to, if it backs up, I'd get a smaller stop there and try to get it down to the 10 cent um, stop. So uh, that trade is going in. Okay, we have one minute to the open. Um, the, there, my trade's in. So somebody at VM, let's see, burner's in at one minute and plug in at two minutes. So we'll be watching VM on the first one. Um, 20 cent stop. Uh, okay, that's uh, unless it goes immediately. Look at that going right now. Goodness. Um, but it's long, so it's helping you out. Um, so we shall see. That's a pretty tight stop, 20 cents on a $158 stop. So that's a fraction of a percent um, is that you're giving yourself there. So that's just very tight. Just realize that. Let's see. Plug on a 20 cent stop and a seven. Yeah, that's a, that's, if anything, either right on or maybe even too big, nice and safe, if you will. So you probably won't get bumped out of your trade for plug. So, 
Okay, burner switched into one dollar stop. I think you're gonna like that a lot better. And there's the bell, it was just in time, so that counts. All right, so the first one it's setting up is the one minute entry from burner. So again, that, that is a long, so it's long, long, short across the way. I'm watching my CCL over there to the right. I do like the action there that that's backing up top. That's pretty good. We're going to refresh the market real quick. We wait on that first minute and see how the market opens. Still showing the pre-market there, so we'll uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. <clears throat> On another screen, yeah, it looks like uh, the Dow's down 0.87 and SPY's 0.6, but so about where they opened. All right, just saw the move there into minute one. So 156.89 will be the entry um, for a burner. So you get down to 155.89 um, would be, you can draw the stop there, 155.89, the $1 stop. So, yep. Perfect. So you can see that 20 cent stop. Yeah, it would have been like smack. <laughs> you probably wouldn't even had a time to get the stop in. So from an R perspective, that's instructive. Again, on VMware, if you have a quick stop, unless you're using hot keys, which TradeStation has, um, you could honestly lose more than an R because you entered the trade and then you're putting your stop in enter and it could be down 60 cents. So that would have been three R, right? So good lesson there. And what I like from here is that uh, it did hold in that first minute there. So uh, you might, uh, I do like the action on how that looks there on uh, VMware and that maybe you'll get a move higher there. All right, we just entered minute two. So who's the two entry? I, that's, um, yep, right there is the entry on plug. So 714, you can draw that in. 20 cent stops off the bottom. So if, again, uh, one R would be up 734. That's almost at the top of the screen. You make a little tick there if you want, just to kind of give a eyeball. So again, that's your one R point on a 20 cent. So nice move out of that so far. And yeah, look at uh, VMware looking long. Um, all right. So my short trade obviously set up a little bit sooner. It did run up all the way to 1728. So just realize anything you take out of the gate would have been stopped out um, on CCL. I did put it as a three minute entry. So I get the next bar as far as my entry. So I'm not thrilled with that entry. I'm also not unhappy with it. Uh, plugs go and uh, plug just went past the one R point. So that's pretty nice. All right, we just did go to minute three there. So I'm at a 1709 entry. So my stop to the upside is uh, 1729, so top of the screen there. So that should hold and it happened to work out that I'm there. So my trade's uh, working nicely. So all three trades working nicely right now. I guess plug's just gonna run up and tag two R's. So 714 plus 40 cents would be 754 would be the, uh, the next R there. All right, as far as when are we out of the trade, who's out first? Uh, out at 10, out at 10, and then we're all out at 10. So there you go. All right, over on the SPY, as far as the market, market's in the red at all. So again, that's gonna help me a little bit more. I'm bringing up the SPY on a different screen, just to kind of take a look at it. And then uh, we'll go to a uh, one minute chart there. Okay, so all three trades in the green, I like that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start looking around a little bit. I'll leave your trades up. We can get back to mine. I think mine is pretty safe, but I just doomed it because I said that. But uh, let's look at RCL short. We'll go on the right screen only here. Very almost, yeah, it's almost the exact same chart with, um, uh, the one I took, Carnival. So again, if you wait for it to do that big doji up to almost 52.45, then it comes back down to 52. You couldn't take it there, but you certainly could take it around the 52.05 range uh, when it kind of retraces back into the green there. That's be a good point to take it and then uh, watch it sell off from there. 
All right, let's look at Dell Long on the right-hand screen again. Uh, again, they were in the uh, VMW type news. So this would have been a long, okay, the market didn't like that nearly as much. Dell opened up over 10% and they're down at 9% now. It kind of looks like an entry, but I wouldn't touch it. That's too far of a move down. That's a dollar and a half move down Ugh. on a $50 stock. I, yeah, I would, I would kill that off for, for today as far as uh, any potential ideas. All right. REGI was the short that we needed to wait for volume to come in. So looking, just adding those numbers up across the bottom, probably still not a hundred hundred thousand of volume, but um, it is setting up kind of nicely. I can't remember the theme. Oh, it was a whiff earnings kind of thing. So I have REGI short weight. Um, zoom out on REGI to like a uh, 15 minute. Again, this is a short thesis. Would I take REGI short here? I do like that early setup out of it. Um, yeah, I'd pay for money this one. I wouldn't real money, but I it's a trade. I would enter, yeah, 2580. You could enter here and then your stop's gonna be 40 cents up over uh, 2620. So you could enter at 2580 on, uh, on REGI short. Again, stop it up at a 2620, that's a 40 cent short. So whatever your math works out for your R there, I do like that. So let me write down what I said to take it at, 2580 or so with a 2620 stop. So we'll see, uh, we'll circle back to that one. Uh, let's go to AVAV, this was a long name. So that would not have worked. Um, selling off over two dollars, it's barely gapping up now, so that would be a dead, uh, dead issue there on AVAV. Let's look at NEO NIO. This is your EV market. I have it as a short, uh, just because it's run up so much. A lot of congestion, it's the volume there 3,000. There's not enough volume to really get into. Well, yeah, there is. Um, that's millions, not thousands off the right. So um, now I don't see anything that it entices me as an entry point here on NEO. Let's look at workhouse, Workhorse. This is the long WKHS. Okay, it didn't, it took off right out of the gate. So if you missed that, then you wouldn't be looking at re-entering any trade. Um, when it went back down to 725 at minute five, you could consider it, but I don't know if there's, that one might just continue to rock higher, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't touch it from a day trade perspective. And then let's look at our old friend LK. Hey, LK, uh, let's see. I, you know, from a trade that's up 6%, we'll see if that holds. I would love to think that the bottom's in, but I can't promise that. I do think with the looming news of uh, going down to um, meeting with NASDAQ on Friday on whether or not they're going to get delisted, I kind of think they're doing everything right. So I could see that going either way. Delisting is getting priced in for LK. It, everybody's assuming it's going to get delisted. So if it doesn't, guess what? get the printing machine out because it's going to go back higher again. But whether you buy it over the counter or on a NASDAQ kind of doesn't matter, but uh, it will to the headlines. So, oh my, oh my LK doesn't get delisted. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of crazy there. Okay. So let's get back. Uh, let's go to my trade and then I'll talk about what's going on with VMware there. Um, so we've got, my carnival short, I looks like I'm in an, uh, the one R range or so to in the green. So that looks good. All these trades close out right now. So looking at the uh, dollar stop, uh, we are past three R. So congrats on uh, if you were taking this uh, yeah, paper trade right. Um, but you get credit. Look at that. Um, pretty much uh, rocking and rolling past the three R point. Looks like we drew it, what is that, the five R point there up there. So we'll see where everything closes here in a minute, but barring something crazy, that will be the winner 
Um, so real nice trade there in VMware. Uh, really, uh, that, that worked out great. Again, paper stop, uh, if you have that in. So it closed out. So we're at uh, four, four and change, move R, move up in VMware. Uh, obviously, plug is in the green at about 1R. I'm at probably 1.8, 1.7R uh, on the right-hand side for CCL. So uh, good work, team. All three of those trades worked uh, great today, and people would be making money if they followed that. All right, let's pull up. Look at that. You get a big W for the winner. Uh, it should be a gold star, but, you know, drawing a star may not be easy. All right, we can continue drawing if you want after you pull up the green long-term winners off to the left. And again, tomorrow we're gonna go to a different screen for this. LK in the house, I'm tired of looking at Carnival. Let's get LK in the right screen. Boom, yep, right. I, I, chuckle, chuckle, yeah, where, <laughs> where's LK gonna be in an hour, right? Uh, do not hop in and trade this either long or short. It's too hard of a, it's a dart throw. Okay, so we are looking now left uh, up at the long names and see what's going up. As far as the overall market, we're still hanging out around a percent down. NASDAQ's almost even though, point, negative 0.04. So again, tech remains a strength. So we have a psychedelic name and VOSQF up over 10%, LK at 9% uh, up. Yeah, I know you don't use those, see those words very often. Workhorse, again, that's a newbie to our screen, up 6%. RVV is psychedelic. CLS, CLIS is a penny stock. Uh, shrooms are psychedelic, so maybe there's a headline there. Our old favorite, DraftKings, is up. Northwest Bio, very nice. MongoDB, Clovis Pharmaceutical, Netflix. SPXB is up almost a percent. That's my safety name, so pretty much as I'm de-risking going off into the election. You're gonna see loading up on SPXB. Again, those are bonds specifically out of the S&P 500. So they're not the triple B bonds that are gonna pay us four and a half to 5%. They're more of the A and double A bonds, which are gonna give you that three and a half and 4%. So uh, it's the best I can do for everyone right now. Okay, let's switch over to what's in the red. There are probably some decent uh, red names. LK up to 13%. Nice. I like it. Okay. Those are all options up top. Then we have Delta Airlines. YCBD is a psychedelic name. Uh, those are bouncing around pretty good. NEO down 3%. So not a whole lot of huge, you know, 10% plus names down. So that's kind of good because we do have some of those to the upside. So airlines, cruise lines, and banks. Callaway Golf down a couple of percent. AT&T down a couple percent like it has every day for the past like decade. Um, Boeing down a little bit. It's another name that's bouncing around. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and yeah, go back to the green. You can kill that. Uh, I'm tired of watching plugs. So let's put SPY in on the left. There's how you can see the market. It's uh, going pretty good. NASDAQ just hit even and uh, creeping into the green. So again, tech names are getting a push uh, there as well. All right, uh, looks like your exit. Let's talk VMware and talk real world for a second. I know you guys were paper uh, paper trading. Yeah, you know, it's funny. There's a psychologically to missing trades that would have worked. Guess what? FOMO is our academic topic. Nice, seg nice segue, which stands for fear of missing out. <clears throat> okay, so VMware, when you talk of exits, you would, you would have hit that 3R. Now it's something, so I know it's a paper trade, but when you have a trade where you take it and basically you had what, six minutes of straight up, that's where if you have your stop set at three hours, that's where I would actually back that down to two, I would sell two thirds when it hits three shares and let the rest run. Um, so you would have taken three R out of two thirds of your share and then just let the, let the rest go. And there's a couple of philosophies. You can just wait till the first red bar you see and then get out. So that would have been an exit at 161.25 at the bottom because again, you wouldn't exit it in the middle of the minute. You'd wait for it to close and uh, go from there. Um, so that's how you can kind of continue that run. Um, so consider that's a lot of switchology. You don't want to be a buffoon and have a perfectly in the can 3R trade and then try to milk it to four or five out of a few shares and then dork up the switches, right? So just be careful with what you're doing. Maybe you have 
Uh, I used to set up multiple trade tickets, which can confuse yourself too, but I'd have all these trade tickets out for the different scenarios. And remember, as soon as you execute one of the scenarios, you have to kill the other trade tickets. Um, you, yeah, yes and no burner on trade station. I've looked at it. I, I'm not quite seeing it being the Dalai Lama yet. Um, I've funded my account. I'm gonna probably pull that money back out because I'm a professional subscriber since I do this. So I would end up having to pay pay, pay station, uh, excuse me, trade station to play. And I'm just not willing to do that. You guys know me. So, all right, let's, <clears throat> all right, it might be on your end. I don't know uh, if anybody else sees me. Oh, there we go. So uh, who knows? But you can certainly see, again, VMware, we're talking about how to milk that trade higher. You can see it's basically going to give back all of its gains. So that's kind of a day trader's dream is that you captured at least three plus are the upside. And then it's almost back down to where you entered it. So sweet. All right. Uh, let's switch over to our topic of the day. <clears throat> we're going to start with a screen called panic buying and uh, which is FOMO. This is, it's not exactly how when you, when you talk about a trade and you miss it, but I will say that um, a philosophy I talk about regularly is when you make a decision on a, an investment thesis, whether that's a day trade or a long-term investment, I'm generally thinking long-term. When you make a decision, you want to get paid on your decision, meaning don't get, don't kill it after a little bit of success, right? you you did all the research, you've made the decision, and then you go into it and you take it and you hold it and you give it time so you get to repay. No, I would not re-enter VMW. Um, uh, paper account, you could take it back long here, but because that's probably profit taking. Uh, real world money, I would not touch it. Um, you know, I'd be happy and just go, go on about my day, go, go to the gym, right? So, <clears throat> but good question. I like it. Thanks for asking that. So uh, back to the panic buying. So panic buying is kind of the opposite of that is if you look at work or Nicola um, and you say to yourself, I'm like, mm, no, I don't, I, I don't think that's it. And then Nicola just screams higher. You, you can't beat yourself, up, beat yourself up over that. When you think of the investment world, there are, you know, 6,000 or so stocks, the bond markets, you know, six times that. So there's all these potential investments you could make on a daily basis and they'll either move up or down. And there's always gonna be investments that outpace yours, right? So what, get over it, grow up. Um, you're not gonna always have the best investments of the day, nor are you really trying, right? You want good investments that'll cook over time. So the panic buying is when something runs up and then you buy it. Okay, that is like the ultimate home game move. Uh, the Robin Hood uh, play of the day is let's wait for, so, for something to double and then I'll just, yes, please, I will hop in right then because that's about when things are crashing. So uh, let's talk about um, what can think, you know, the FOMO, you see that fear of missing out. Um, a short squeeze can do that. That's when you see these big moves up um, out of stocks that should be clearly shorted. Um, so could be profit taking from the shorts, that sort of thing. It can make things uh, move up. Okay, let's go down to the key tech takeaways there. Uh, rapid increase in purchase volume. Again, the Momo fund that I talked about, excuse me, MTUM. It's one of those that they buy off of this. They don't wait for something to double, but they do wait for something in motion and they hop in, which exacerbates that move to the upside or the downside there. <clears throat> This is also when people say that their uh, Uber driver starts talking about individual stocks or an actor gets on TV and starts talking about how they've done uh, amazing at stock picking, which is generally at the time where they get on TV. And that's when also the people that are on Robinhood say that they're geniuses. Well, when everything in the market moves up, then everybody is a genius, right? That's not the hard time to, uh, to everybody's winning at that point. So, all right. Uh, that's about all we need off of that one. We are going to go to the next one, which is still marveling at a momentum uh, ETF. You do not want Investopedia to say they're marveling at what you're doing, because that's generally not a compliment. Marveling means like disbelief, <laughs> like how is this a thing? So, <laughs> but it is, uh, it is followed out there. People have tried to execute the strategy. And then of course, 
couple of people sitting around said we could open this in our garage. I don't know who opened it. It was iShares, so that's uh, BlackRock. So uh, for as BlackRock shareholders, we think this is a great idea. But um, when you hear people at home, like, how do I execute the strategy? You just create an ETF that does the strategy. I know you guys like to think that way uh, as well. So momentum investment, strong uptrends. Let's uh, go ahead and scroll down. This is an article from 2019 where it was up already. There we go. That's probably good. Um, 124 stocks you can see there in that second paragraph. 59% are technical and financial services. I could take a hard look at uh, my portfolio and others and probably see almost a similar number. So I wouldn't say that I'm uh, I'm looking up at the SPY now. It looks like I wonder if there's some headline news that's causing that sell-off. Um, we'll check that in a minute. We don't need to do it right now. Uh, we'll finish up on this, but yeah, you think 59% uh, tech, so tech heavy, financial heavy. For us, you're thinking, uh, you know, BlackRock, Blackstone, uh, JP Morgan, those sorts of names and all the tech names that we talked about today. Okay, so let's bring that down. Last one I want to show you is momentum investing. Again, the Investopedia's def definition. So we'll just scroll up to a key tech ta key takeaways if they have them. There we go. So just cover knees, capitalize on existing trends. So you're not trying to, this is largely AI kind of based stuff, is uh, you're not trying to pick the trend before it happens and capitalize on it. That's that contrarian investing or value investing, trying to buy the airlines when they're down at pennies on the dollar. Uh, momentum is you wait for it to reverse, then you ride the wave. There are also day trading strategies that do the uh, same thing. Strict set of rules based on technical indicators. Again, technical is its own world. Self-licking ice cream cone. People see what they want to see. It's like looking at uh, clouds. And then few professional managers make use of this just because there's really no judgment. You're, in, you're, back, you're into a math equation. You're in really into an algorithm that's buying things for you. Okay, let's go to the CNBC and check that out. Okay, NASDAQ was almost even. So um, now they're down you know, over half a percent. So that's kind of a big sell-off. VIX is on the rise. Um, we've been up so much that I could see a, a decent sized red day showing up today. Uh, if you were gonna day trade that, you would just basically buy VXX long, which is the increase in volatility. I don't know what good story could come out of today, but I do know that bad stories can continue to, to come up as people process what Fauci said yesterday turn it into a doom and gloom headline and then publish articles today. So that's kind of kind of my take on where the, the market's going to end up today. We'll go back to the TD Ameritrade board so you can see what I'm talking about as far as the move down in SPY. Pretty aggressive here, uh, sell off. And then I will take uh, review the chat and look at your questions. All right, let's see the question. Over what time frame do you consider momentum investing? After all, it can't continue indefinitely, I don't think. Uh, I would agree from a technical aspect, um, and momentum is a technical thing. So, um, so answering that in parts, if you will. So can it continue indefinitely? No, right? There's got to be a time to listen or to end your uh, momentum investing. That is generally when the trend is broken. Click over to the uh, quote monitor and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you could say that the uptrend that the uh, SPY is in right now from the March 23rd lows, that uptrend to the right is now a momentum trade. And you would stay in that trade until you either break a channel like is depicted, but you also have the moving averages. Uh, you can try to throw those on there if you want. Um, I think it's pattern select. Uh, looking for moving averages. Maybe not, maybe it's under studies. Anyhow, he'll, uh, you'll see him surfing around there a little bit while we're trying to figure out where the, uh, the um, moving averages are. Um, there you go, go to a 50 or go to a simple moving average down at the bottom. There, that's just a simple moving average of the entire uh, stock market. I don't know what day that's based off of. It looks like it's nine day, nine day simple moving average. But yeah, they can also be broken by a moving average. The common ones are 50 day and you think there's 
Um, a 50 day moving average is about a quarter. There's about 50 tradable days in the 90 and change calendar days in a quarter. When you think of a year long moving average, that's the 200 day. There's about 200 tradable days out of the 365 ish. So um, that's where people will set those lines. And as soon as it hits it, you exit the momentum trade or have your computer do it. Um, so over what time frame? That I think that's probably the better question. And I would say that's the big unknown is who knows, who cares, right? You just want to ride the trend as long as it takes. So let's go back to the OTOT chart two pattern here. Um, so as long as it takes, right? If it, you, you wouldn't want to bail on it early because you're getting paid all the way. And in a momentum investing, kind of like a day trade, once the trade enters the green, you're happy, right? So now it's the, why do I want to leave? I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I want to stick with it. So uh, good question there. I can't say I'm a momentum trader, even though it kind of looks like it because I'm in the same types of names. I'm a best of breed investor. I'm looking for the best of breed and we're gonna hold those names as long as we can until the thesis changes, which is a lot different than a technical um, investing. And that's why I said if Amazon got cut in half, I would buy more in a heartbeat. Um, probably time to start selling my cars and buy Amazon stock if it got cut in half. So uh, that's what I've got for you today. Real nice job on all the trades. Everybody was in the green. So I may set this as an example for the uh, sample one. But with that, I will let you guys go and we'll check back in tomorrow. Bye.